What's up guys, Nate Vincent here with FCB Euro. Behind me we have an F30 328. We're gonna be going through the N20 and N26 timing system on this engine. This engine is a relatively reliable and trouble-free engine, yet it has one Achilles heel, and that is the timing chain. BMW has actually extended the warranty to seven years and 70,000 miles, yet a lot of cars are still falling outside of that. If you were to go to the dealership, this job requires 10 to 15 hours of labor and could cost upwards of $5,000 to complete. This is a pretty serious job. We're gonna walk you through it step by step and help you save a lot of money. So one of the ways you can tell that your N20 or N26 engine is in need of service is by listening to the engine on the first startup. You'll hear a serious amount of noise coming from the timing system, which is located in the front of the engine. Obviously, if you're jumping into the N20, N26 timing chain kit, you're gonna need some specialty tools to service this job. Um, so we're gonna go over those three main tools that were all offered on FCPRO's website. Um, the first one you're gonna need is a flywheel holder. So this little guy goes in in your bell housing, basically clamps down, has some uh, teeth from a sprocket here, and it will hold your flywheel solid. This will make sure that your engine is locked at TDC or top dead center. The next tool we're gonna need is this. This is an oil pump lock kit. So if you're replacing the oil pump, this is what locks it in place so you can loosen up the bolts and get it serviced. This is also available on FCPRO's website. The final tool kit you're gonna need is the N20, N26 timing kit. Um, this is basically everything required to lock the camshafts at the top of the engine. So this piece right here is going to sit on top of the engine and is actually going to lock the two camshafts in TDC. The other portion of this right here is the portion you're going to need to install the sprockets. So obviously these sprockets have um, variable valve timing or adjustment in them, the BMW's Vanos. Um, this is what allows you to put them in the correct position so the engine is timed appropriately when it goes to start for the first time. So along with these three uh, specialty tools here, all offered by CTA and sold on FCPRO's website, you're going to need this associated list of normal hand tools to complete this job. You're going to need this list of tools. This list of tools. That list of tools. So now that we've gone over the timing kit, we've gone over the specialty tools, let's jump in and there's a lot of things we got to pull off that thing so we can get down to the nuts and bolts of the engine. Uh, so let's get started. All right, so the first step we're going to do is we're going to remove the air box, the engine cover, and the cowl. This is going to give us access to the entire top side to so, we, so we can service this thing. Loosening up the boot, uh, strap for the air box so I can pull it out with the mass airflow right attached. Now we're going to unplug that. Set the plug aside and the air box will unclip the hood released cable and we're just going to work these these little poppers up. There's three of them. All right, once that is released, then we're gonna pull down on the boot and separate the air box. All right, this is a good time. You might wanna stick a rag in here, something in here, just to make sure stuff doesn't fall into this intake plenum. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off the engine cover here. This is simply just pop up. Pop up in the back. And I'm gonna have to disconnect the plugs here real quick. All right, so when pulling the engine cover off, um, obviously these are the attachment pins, so right here, here, and then there's one in the back. Um, but I found it's easier, especially on a higher mileage car like this one is, where the plastic becomes very brittle, to actually disconnect the, the uh, vacuum lines right here and here, rather than try to un undo the plugs on the engine cover itself. All right, so now next step is we're going to get this chunk of foam insulation off of this thing. Um, this is literally here just to quiet the valves down. Noisy engines need lots of sound insulation. Uh, make sure you don't rip it. Obviously, older cars, higher mileage, things get a little more brittle. It's a good time to clean this stuff up when you get it out. All right, next step we're going to do is we're going to remove this cowl. And we're going to just pop this thing right up. Now pulling this cable out. And 
point up the seal. All right, so now we are going to pull up the wipers and we're gonna pull this rear section of the cowl out. One off. All right, now taking a five millimeter wrench, we're gonna turn these 90 so we can release. So right under here, under the side cowl, you won't be able to see it, but there is a little release tab that we need to pop up. So you gotta pop this guy up. All right, now we're gonna pull the belly pan off this thing. Um, I highly suggest having a little impact with an eight millimeter on it. It'll just save you so much time. Uh, I think there's like 20 fasteners. And this is where it gets gross. All that stuff. All right, next step is we're gonna pull this little plastic guard pan um, off the bottom of the steering rack. Same thing, eight millimeter fasteners. Next thing we're going to do is to gain access to the transmission, we're gonna pull the transmission guard off. Um, that's just gonna make it a little easier to lock the flywheel down right here. Again, eight millimeter fasteners, except for that one, which is a 10. All right, next step is we're gonna drain the oil um, using a 10 millimeter Allen. 10 millimeter. And. Don't judge me on my oil color. So if you're like me, uh, I drain the oil out before putting the car in neutral. Uh, that means I need to, uh, I obviously can't put the car in neutral because I can't start the engine. Uh, so I'm gonna show you the quick trick to override on a ZF8 speed and put the car into neutral and allow the parking brake mechanism to release. Sorry, not the park and brake mechanism. The, the parking claw. The thing, when you put it in park, the claw. All right, so with this uh, process, with the timing chain, we're gonna have to be able to rotate the engine. The transmission's in park right now, so to release the transmission from park, we're actually gonna tighten this five millimeter screw up. And you can see it's gonna push on this lever. Uh, this lever is going to release the parking claw in the transmission and put the transmission into neutral. So using a five millimeter Allen, we're gonna go up in here and we're just gonna tighten this down and you will hear the transmission click out of gear. So let's just, right there. So now we're in neutral. So I'm just gonna go up just a little bit more to make sure it doesn't engage. Don't put any, not too much pressure on that. You don't wanna damage anything. Um, and now we can put a 22 millimeter wrench on the front of the engine and we're just gonna verify that it spins freely. So just showing that the engine is not locked in place. So it's spinning freely. So right now we're just going to loosen up the 10 millimeter on the side of the negative terminal to just remove or to loosen the clamp. So maybe one, two turns on that, two turns. Um, and then I'm just going to wiggle the terminal off. And we're off. Obviously you can tell by the lights going out. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our E20 um, torque and we're gonna lo loosen up these um, four bolts that hold the strut brace in place. Got my 10 millimeter uh, on impact driver, so we're gonna loosen these up. So starting here with the, the van hose plug right in the center, release the tabs, push down, pull up, um, and then release the clips. Um, these are going to need a pick or a screwdriver to release that clip so I don't damage it. All right, next thing we're going to disconnect is the back of the fuel rail. That is right here. Get to the release mechanism. Fuel rail re released. Okay, disconnect the, believe this is an O2 sensor. So we're gonna disconnect the oxygen sensor. Disconnecting the high pressure fuel pump. 
Now disconnecting the vacuum solenoid for the boost pressure. Okay, I'm gonna work back from here. Um, there's a little clip here that I'm going to disconnect or slide it off the intake manifold or slide it off the valve cover. Trying not to damage anything. Weeding this out. The second O2 sensor, which is right down here. All right, both O2 sensors disconnected. Now working my way around. So I'm going to take the rear mounting tabs for the cover off, which should come up with the harness. I'll be able to flop the whole harness over this way and get it out of the way. E6. The same E6, just on a different angle. Hit the floor, right? Alright, so this allows this whole assembly to come up um, as long as the O2 sensors are, are unplugged already um, and just unclipped, we can bring this whole assembly up and out of the way and gain much better access. There's a little clip holding the O2 wires on. You just kind of have to finger them off. And there we go. Remember that the vacuum line runs through this little groove right here. We're just going to stick the vacuum line up and out of the way and we can flop the harness over here and get it out of the way. All right, next step is we are going to disconnect the other side of the harness. So we disconnected a lot of the sensors, the O2 sensors, um, the high pressure fuel pump, all that from this side. This was the harness that wrapped around here. Um, now we, you can see we have another harness that wraps around the front. Uh, this controls the high pressure uh, fuel injectors and the coil packs and also grounds. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect those. Uh, eight millimeter on the grounds and the rest is pretty much plug and play. So let's get started. Okay, now coil pack, uh, traditional flip up and unplug. And then with the injector, there is a small tab that needs to be moved over. So for the injector, there is a little tab you can see right here. We need to sort of pry this tab um, that's facing about the uh, about seven o'clock if you're looking at it and away and you can get the injector out. So you can see uh, injector, coil pack, and ground. We're gonna go right down the line doing the exact same thing on all of these. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this vacuum actuator here. Um, we're gonna declip this and then we're gonna pull the vacuum actuator right off the wastegate. We have to get to this right here which is the timing chain actuator. Sorry, I had a brain fart. Okay, so that's loose. Now we're going to get the hose out, set that aside, and now there's three 10 millimeters we're gonna loosen up from that. All right, fasteners are off. We're going to unclip the wastegate at the bottom. And we can remove this whole assembly. All right, now that we have that removed, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull the coils out. So just give them a little wiggle. Do you love that sound? Yeah. All right, so the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to grab a rag. Um, and we're going to disconnect right here the feed line into the high pressure fuel pump and also the high pressure fuel pump connection to the fuel rail. This is both 17 millimeter inches. Um, we're going to wrap them with a rag so the fuel gets absorbed. Um, these are under high pressure, just be very careful. Bing! 17 millimeter. Again, with a 17 millimeter, now we're going to disconnect the feed line. So this is the bottom one here, running in. So feed line is disconnected from the high pressure fuel pump. Um, now what we're going to do is we're gonna finish disconnecting this. We're actually gonna unbolt the high pressure fuel pump and we're gonna unbolt the four injectors and pull the fuel rail off.
All right, now using an E8 Torx, we're gonna pull the uh, fuel rail right off on these two clamps that hold it down. The next step is we're going to remove this high pressure fuel pump. Um, this is two, held down by two fasteners on either side here. Um, we're going to pull this up with the high pressure fuel line right here. Um, we're going to pull up the whole thing. You want to evenly go back and forth on these because there might be some spring pressure behind this. And now we'll pull off the high pressure fuel pump. Get this wire out of here. There we go. That was way harder than it needed to be. All right, the next thing is we're going to disconnect the vacuum pump right here. So you can see we have a, uh, this will come off with it. This is what goes the intake manifold, the vacuum pump there. And we have the sucker line. We're going to squeeze that, pull that out, set that down. All right, so there's three T30 screws back here. Um, you're going to need either a short stubby one or something like this to get to them. Um, there's three, and they're basically they're like an upside down triangle. So there's one on either side and one straight down off the middle. So. All right, so now, now that we've uh, loosened up the three bolts on the vacuum pump, we're just going to wiggle this and push it backwards at the same time. Now, when you remove that, when we reinstall this, we're going to have to make sure this is in time with the cam and slots in. Hold it. So if I flip it here, you can see where the three bolts are. Like I said, it's like, kind of like an upside down triangle. I'm just wiping down a little bit of oil uh, from a slightly leaky valve cover here. Um, and we're going to vacuum all of the little debris around this before we go and pop this off. All right, so the final step is we're going to disconnect the camshafts here. So both cams are disconnected. Get these wires out of the way. And then we're going to disconnect the breather hose here. What I might do is separate it here and then separate it down low afterwards. Very, very soft and ginger there. I'll set that aside. I'm going to disconnect this whole pipe and get it out of here. Running around the seam just to make sure everything is disconnected. You can see we're clear here. We're clear along the intake track. We're clear across the back without the vacuum pump there. And then down here you can see we're clear. So now we're going to loosen these bolts up. Um, there's a very specific uh, BMW tightening and loosening procedure on this. Uh, this valve cover is plastic and relatively brittle. Uh, especially when the car is higher mileage, they tend to crack and then they leak oil obviously. So we're gonna follow the, the BMW tightening procedure and to basically sum up what that procedure is, um, to loosen you start at the outside and you sort of spiral, spiral your way around into the inside. All right, now with an E12, we're gonna loosen these up. I'm gonna start right here and work my way to the inside. So there's 20 bolts here, so we're just gonna count them and make sure we have all 20 and we didn't miss one. So we know we have all the bolts loose. At this point, what I like to do is go grab where the vacuum pump was. Um, I'll pull the oil cap off actually for right now and give this a little bit of a tug and try to get loose. Remember, this is very brittle, so we wanna be very careful with it. Try to get it to come up without breaking anything. So gently, we're just pulling up. <laughs> you can see this front somewhat loose. You can see I'm, I'm being very, very, very ginger here. Not flex it too much, just let it kind of wiggle. I can see that starting to come. It's a little wiggle there. There we go. We're up in the front. So I'm just going to kind of wiggle. Make sure we come up evenly. Some of these threads may catch again. So just make sure they're totally loose. Sometimes they tend to catch themselves. 
Um, it's nice that they capture themselves in the man uh, or in the. Uh, if you're very careful with this, it will save you a lot of money over having to buy a new, new valve cover. All right, this is a E7, I believe. Yep, E7. So you can get these off without pulling these. You have to pull it up and out the front. But the problem is, is if this catches, um, it'll damage it. So uh, just to play it safe, I just quickly pulled these out pulled and we'll replace the O-rings on them. So, the and here we go. Get the cover off, the fuel line's still a little bit in the way. So we got the valve cover off, um, and now we have our first chance to really kind of inspect this, uh, this timing chain. And looking, you can see there's quite a bit of slack in it. I can, I can move this much more freer than I should be able to. Um, the engine is not at top dead center yet, um, but you can see there is a tensioner right here that should be pushing um, on this timing rail, and it looks like that timing rail is fully extended, which means that the tensioner is fully extended and the timing rail is as far in as it gets but the chain is actually longer than it's spec for, so therefore there is still slack in the system because the timing, the, the, the device, the, the tensioner made to take up that slack is at its maximum travel and it can't move any further. Um, so by changing this chain, um, and obviously, you know, because of this being loose, I can actually see down here, there's actually, there's actually a, you can see wear grooves inside um, these guides. Um, so we're gonna replace all of this stuff uh, honestly, the car has 135,000 miles on it. This is pretty close to as bad as it gets, and this could have turned into, into a goodbye engine moment pretty easily. So uh, pretty happy to do this. Um, like I said, any BMW that's over, you know, honestly over anything over 50, 60, 70,000 miles, um, you should start keeping an eye on that timing chain. All right, now using a 12 millimeter 14, or sorry, 14 millimeter 12 point uh, socket, we're going to remove the four spark plugs. Uh, this will just make turning the engine over a little bit easier as we need to time it. So the next step is we're going to loosen up the serpentine belt and we're gonna pull that off. So basically just take tension off. You can pull it off the alternator um, or any of these pulleys. There we go, once you're off one, you can release and we can pull that off. The next step is, once we have this off, we are going to remove the vibration damper. So I'm just spinning the engine around to get to the other bolts a little easier. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find TDC top dead center, um, and we're gonna install this cam lock tool from CTA Tools on here. So I'm gonna set this right here, just get it ready. Um, what I'm gonna do is I have the spark plugs out, I took a long screwdriver and I just very carefully placed it right down there so it's actually sitting right on top of the piston. Don't put any force or tap it too hard, but you can just let it rest there. Um, and I'm gonna cycle through, um, and you can see that the screwdriver is going down. So we know that the valve train uh, spins basically one half speed the engine uh, speed. So you can see we're going to go down, and now the piston is coming back up. I can feel it in my hand. Um, I can also see that the cams are starting to open up. So that means this is on the, the exhaust uh, cycle for the number one cylinder. So I'm just going to do another 360 degree spin. Piston's down, and now I can see the cams are both coming off the lobes. And when this piston, when the screwdriver or the piston get to the top, right about there, um, I can see that we are approaching TDC or top dead center, maybe a little bit more, right about there. And then I'm also looking, there's flats right there and there on the front of the camshaft right here and right here. And that's what this tool is going to grab onto and align these camshafts to be perfectly in time. So moving us out of the way now, so you can see this is going to sit just like this and it's going to basically hold both those camshafts. I can see I'm a little bit off, 
So I might have to do a little bit of wiggle in here. I can wiggle the engine. This might have gone a little past. I'm gonna loosen these tops up. Lock it down to the cylinder head using these long bolts. Uh, just be very careful, make sure everything's nicely aligned. You're threading into aluminum, so you want to be very ginger. No power tools on this. Dale! No power tools. Dale, no power tools! Oh, what? No power tools! No, I forgot I have to brush my teeth! That is not your toothbrush! I fully suggest hand tools here. Snug there, no more than maybe 10 newton meters of torque. Same here. Snug right there. That's it. Done. All right, so this is locked in place. You can see the cam is not moving. I'm going to tighten these two down now. So now that we have the camshaft locked in place, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this uh, crankshaft and I'm just going to put a teeny bit of tension on it. Um, basically, as the engine was rotating, because it would be pulling the camshafts around, and we just want to make sure that the timing chain is tight on the compression side. So right there, that's it, just a little bit of torque. That's it. Now we're gonna go underneath the car and we're gonna lock in the crankshaft into the top dead, um, top dead center position. So this is a pretty tricky, tricky thing to get to. There's a lock for the engine back here to make sure you're at TDC. Um, what the manual says to do is use a pick um, and there should be a little loop, but you can see it's basically buried up here between the block and the catalytic converter. So I can feel the little loop on my finger and it says to pull in the direction of the loop. So I'm gonna get this in here and we're gonna pull. Um, and as soon as that pops out, then we can take this tool, slide it in and lock the engine in place. So uh, let's see what we can do here. Again, this is gonna be a lot of feel. Just, uh, there we are in. Now I'm gonna pry that forward. And it broke. Success. Yay. All right, so the, uh, the little plug for the dowel to lock it in TDC um, has a little loop on the end, it's, and the manual tells you to go in that loop and pull. As soon as I did, it obviously broke. Um, so I was able to go in with this nice little tool from actually in front of the subframe, kind of go up and back, grab, grab onto it, and then just wiggle it out like that. So now we have that out, we can lock the engine in. So now we're taking the TDC tool, and we're going to lock the engine in place. So here we are, we just got the crankshaft of the N20 locked in place. You can see we have the CTA tools um, locking pin, and that basically slides back into the flywheel of the engine locking it in place. Um, and it's really hard to get a visual confirmation of it being locked in place, so we actually took the uh, dust shield off here. There's three 10 millimeter bolts in this lower dust shield. You can actually shine a flashlight up there and you can actually see it being received in there. Um, so that's just a, a reassuring way to know that your crankshaft is locked in place. And the other thing you want to do is take your 22 millimeter uh, wrench, put it on the front obviously, um, and just make sure you can see that I can put some pressure on this thing um, in both directions and it is literally not moving at all. So we know that we have the crankshaft locked in place. Um, this is good enough to time the engine. Um, that said, we don't want to put any, any significant torque on this. This isn't strong enough to hold the torque. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the flywheel lock, which is going to lock the flywheel and allow us to actually put some significant torque and unbolt the front of this engine. All right, so here we have the CTA Tools flywheel lock. You can see this has the two teeth in it right here. Um, that's going to lock the flywheel. It also has two 13 millimeter bolts that allow it to be adjustable. Um, so we're going to slide this up in here, making sure it's nice and centered in the gap. And once we get it in place, you can see we can actually snug this thing down, lock it in place, and we can tighten these 13s down. So we're fully locked there. Um, I'm just gonna let that hang there. Be careful, it can fall out. Um, but we're just gonna let it sit there for right now. Now I'm going to pull the vibration damper off. Um, I can get some torque on it without putting it on the engine. So I'm gonna just kind of 
Ayrıldı da. All right, so the vibration damper was a little troublesome coming apart. Uh, so what we did is we basically took a brass punch um, and went to the inside of the vibration damper and just knocked it whatever direction we could, back and forth a couple times. Um, and using a little bit of penetrating oil, it was able to come free. All right, so we have the flywheel lock in place. Um, obviously, this thing can rattle loose and fall out, so we're going to use some zip ties to lock it into place. Nice and tight. And down we go. Because we are going to loosen up that front crankshaft bolt. And it has some serious torque behind it. Um, BMW claims the breakaway torque may be upwards of 600 Newton meters. Oof, it moved a little bit, but I think it just locked, it just locked the crankshaft in place. Um, in all seriousness, we may need a push and a pull at the same time. Look at us. I'm just the camera guy. All right, stand back. Let me see if I can push. I'll just break my knuckles and fall into the car when it comes loose. Yeah, just be careful. Okay. Oh, yeah. You can actually see on this bolt where it narrows right there, where it's actually where it's actually stretched. Next step, we are going to remove the oil pan. Um, it is going to be a series of E8 fasteners uh, right here, all the way around. But first, before we do that, we're going to quickly unplug the oil level sensor. So that's over here behind the oil pan. Um, this one's pretty simple. Just to squeeze and disconnect. All right, we're going to set that aside. Make sure nothing is clamped to the oil pan itself. T8, or uh, E8 on all of these. So there's, there's an E8 that helps hold the fuel line mount on. Um, it's a real pain to get to, so just squeeze it in there, and then it creates all the way around the entire oil pan. So, let's get started. Start at the back. I'm going to leave one on diagonal, just keep this. Just got the oil pan out. That was quite a job. Um, so the trick here is to loosen up the passenger side motor mount just slightly, but actually to almost completely remove the driver's side motor mount. So we remove the actual motor mount itself, and then the arm, you can see, is loose up here, um, just so we can move it out of the way. Doing that, and then using some transmission jacks just to basically rock the engine up this way. We lifted it on the passenger side a little bit, but lifted it more on the driver's side. We we're able to wiggle the um, oil pan down and out. The key, though, is when you lift up the, past, or the driver's side of the engine, we're lifting it off the transmission, as you can see here. We had to move the transmission jack as far back as we possibly could because that is the path that the oil pan needs to take to get out. Um, so right now we're going to uh, reattach the motor mouth. We're going to set the motor back down in its original position. Um, you can see we have access to all of the, the underpinnings now. We have the oil pump drive system right here and the crank bolt, uh, the crank bolt's removed. So we're going to basically start pulling all this stuff out. We're going to get the old timing chain out, put the new timing chain in, and we'll be able to button this thing back up. So now to bolt things back together again. All right, now we're just coming down off the transmission jacks a little bit. We're gonna let these motor mounts set back into place. I do must say on these BMWs, there's so much room around this relatively small N20, N26 drivetrain, it makes it actually pretty easy to maneuver. Yeah. Um, you can kind of wiggle the engine whatever way you need to wiggle right. it. It's yeah. pretty awesome. All right, we're down on the one side and we are down on the other side. Remember, no bolts are in these motor mounts, so I'm just going to rest them. We're going to undo this anyway. All right, the time we've all been waiting for. Right now, we're going to basically disconnect all of the things on the timing chain, and we're going to go pull the timing chain out of the engine. So to start that, the first thing we do is we're going to remove the pulse sensors um, that measure the angle of the camshafts. So to do that, we're going to use an E8 Torx. Now gently wiggle and just pull it down. Now do the same thing to the exhaust side. And gently pull that down as well. 
So now that we have the pulse sensors removed, we're gonna go down here to right where the wastegate actuator was. Um, there's a 27 millimeter bolt and that is the timing chain tensioner. We're gonna pull that out, um, have a rag ready because it's gonna be filled with oil. So we're gonna basically pull it out and capture it with the rag. And it's already dripping oil. So get the rag down there and then we'll thread this out. We'll leave those rags down there just in case any oil drips out. All right, so the next step is we're going to actually disconnect the camshaft sprockets uh, from the chain. What I like to do before that is I take the timing tool um, that is provided, I just like to double check that the timing is right. So we don't actually need to put it all the way in, but I put it in the correct position. This is where it's gonna sit, right in front of the engine. And I slide the pins in and I make sure that the pins go into the, into the shaft. So if you look over here, you can see, I move this forward, you can see that these pins are aligned with the holes um, on the sprockets. So it shows me that the engine is in time currently. So when we go to reassemble it with the new timing chain, we use this tool and we're perfectly fine. That right there, showing that it's in time. These both are, both are going in there just like that. So now using a 24 millimeter, um, we're gonna loosen up the cam. There we go. And now we're going to loosen up the exhaust cam. So now we're going to remove the um, both sprockets. Um, it is very, very critical that you know which one goes where. You cannot put the intake one for the, or you can't put the intake one for the exhaust or the exhaust one for the intake. They do have an E and an I on them, but I very highly suggest being very, very cautious with this and making sure you mark where they go. Assembly. Get this out first. Now we'll do the exhaust. <laughs> All right. So the next step, now that we have um, the the sprockets basically loose, we're going to pull the chain up, and we're going to be able to pull the sprockets out. So carefully, just pull the sprockets out. Uh, you want to keep a little bit of tension on this chain. So I tend to just kind of loop it around like that so it doesn't all get stuck down there. Now we're moving the exhaust one. Pull the chain up. Let it slide out a little bit. Do you want to get the exhaust on that? It's an EX for exhaust right there. All right, so now we have the timing chain loose. We're going to go down to the bottom and we're gonna pull this pulley out. Um, I do like to keep this up a little bit, so I'm just gonna stick that there. All right, so two screws from the vibration damper are threaded back in. We just put our fingers on it and we're just gonna wiggle. And we're gonna pull this straight out. There we go. So set this aside. We want to be very careful with this. This is a press fit, so we want to make sure that it stays very clean. You don't want to drop this off your tool bench or anything like that. All right, so the next step we're going to do is we're going to basically loosen up the um, rails in here. So the way we're going to do that is because it's hidden behind this cover that's not removable. So we're going to remove this plug right here, which is going to give us access to this bolt. And there's also two more plugs, one here and one on the other side. We're going to remove those. As soon as we remove those, then we can remove all of the bolts holding in the timing components, and we can slide this whole thing right out of the engine. All right, so here we are with a eight millimeter Allen. I'm gonna pull the top plug. Let's right, get this harness out of the way. And we have the kit um, has new plugs provided, so we'll just set these aside. When you pull these plugs, make sure the crush wash washer comes off with them um, as you'll be replacing that. So there you go, two bottom plugs, both with crush washers on them. So to get the uh, tensioners loose, or the, the rails loose, I should say, we're going to use a T40 for the top one. 
right here. And you're going to want something that's pretty long to get the depth. And then on the bottom one, it is a T45 um, that's going to loosen those up. So starting with the top one, we're going to loosen this up. Again, make sure you save these bolts because we're going to reuse these. You know, drop that in there very carefully. And now moving to the bottom two, which is the slightly larger size. It is a T45. We're going to loosen those two up. So starting with the top side. So, so I'm just going to do this by hand. Make sure that the fasteners come all the way out. You can see that it actually sticks its nose out a little bit so I can grab my fingers and carefully remove it. And we'll do the same thing on the other one. Break it free. All right, and we're out. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm laying out some oil absorbent mats um, in preparation for when I pull the timing chain out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen up the last few bolts, we're gonna pull the entire assembly out and I want a nice flat, clean place that I can lay it down and keep it in the, in the original orientation. Moving into the final few bolts here, uh, we just need to remove these two um, right here for this top, top tensioner, one, two. Um, these are both E8s. while I'm kind of holding, supporting the chain. And now, carefully working the chain over the cams, we just pull up on everything. So, and trying to keep it all together. Things would kind of get stuck a little bit. So you just gotta be careful. And you can see I'm coming up. And the, the tensioner here is uh, stuck on the camshaft a little bit. So, I'm wiggle that down. There we go. everything together. This is a little bit of a... There we go. That is the entire timing chain assembly from an N20 or N26 engine removed. So looking here, um, initially I see some damage right away. Um, I can see that this, these tabs are broken off. See, there's a little bit of cracking there. Um, assuming that the, the chain length is a little longer than it should be as well. I can also see down here that this is cracked. This should be fully round. So um, there you go. I mean, this is, this is the exact problems that you see on N20 and N26 engines. Um, these little thin areas cracking on the guides. Um, the chain is, is pretty stretched, so we're going we're gonna to look at that. Um, there's a little bit of wear, not too, too much, but you can see, if you look in here, you can see the, the grooves um, of the wear from the chain sliding on it. Um, but the biggest thing is this stuff right here, because if this doesn't align itself and hold itself in the correct location inside the engine, then obviously, um, you know, the tension that the tensioner is putting on it right here is not going to be counteracted because this is going to move out of, out of position, loosening up the entire chain. So um, one other note we want to check here. Um, so if you have an early production N26, you're going to want to check the sprocket. Um, you can see this is actually the old style sprocket, it looks like. Um, so the, the new style sprocket should have a laser etched um, area in it. And if you have the smooth sprocket like this one, this is a 2012 car, so this is a very early production, you need to replace it with the, um, with the updated sprocket. Um, it's available at SPRO, it's not very expensive, um, and obviously it's a very key component of this whole system. So, so there we go, N26 timing chain. So the next thing we're gonna do is, while we're in here, it completely makes sense to replace the um, drive assembly for the oil pump slash balance shaft. So this assembly right here is sold as a complete kit. Um, it's part of the kit that you buy when you go to do the timing chain. So what we wanna do here is we're gonna to need to lock this in place. And because this is a balance shaft, it needs to be timed. Um, so one word of caution, if you turn the sprockets at the top to loosen them up, sometimes this moves a little bit um, if, if this bolt is undone first. So what we wanna do is just make sure this is in time. So let me show you how to do that first. The first thing we're gonna do um, is we have to remove this oil pickup on the rear wheel drive cars. Um, this is pretty simple, but let me grab a rag because it's dripping oil. And the CTA tool um, for the oil pump is, includes all the uh, components you need to do this. So I'm trying to stand out here so I don't have oil drip on me, but we're gonna take this 10 millimeter out. 
There's the first oil drop. And there's some more. <laughs> so this is, this is the hole that locks in place. So this tool goes right between these two. All right, so because the engine spun a little bit when we went to loosen the camshafts, obviously the engine's locked in time, but the balance shaft moves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this wrench a little bit and we're gonna use the locking mechanism right here and we're gonna find when that, when that locks in the balance shaft in the correct position. So I'm just moving this just slightly and I just felt it pop right in there. And now I know it's locked in place. So the balance shaft is in the correct location. I pulled the pickup down just a little bit. I didn't want to actually break the seal here. Pulled it down just a little bit to hold that locked in place. The next thing we're going to do is take the CTA tool um, locking mechanism. So this is what's actually going to lock the front pulley of this uh, oil pump so we can loosen up this bolt and we can get the entire assembly off. So coming up here, um, pretty neat stuff. Just goes like that and then the two bolts provided go into the block. So just find those threads, wherever they may be. We're just gonna lock that in place. Okay, with a 10 millimeter wrench, I'm just gonna snug the tool in place. Make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And now we're gonna break the screw loose here. To do that, we're going to be using a T60 Set this bolt aside. Now, because the balance shaft is locked in place, we can remove the tool and we're going to quickly replace the oil pump drive mechanism and then we'll reinstall the tool and torque the bolt down. Set the tool aside. All right, now we're going to remove tension on this tensioner to make it a little easier to remove. Um, to do that, there's a piece that's included with the tool. So you can see here the tensioner is almost fully extended. There's a little hole here for this tool to be received. Actually, the tool is a little big for that hole. So I may just grab an Allen wrench to do that. But what we're going to do is we're basically going to push this tensioner back. There's a hole right here in the plastic part. Um, you can see I'm in it right there. We're going to push that back and we're going to lock it in place here. That's going to take the chain tension off. And then we can unbolt this and remove the entire thing. OK, now we're locked in. Now the final step here is we're going to loosen up these three bolts. So one, two, three, and then this whole assembly will move out. The three bolts holding it in are T30s. So we're going to move these three T30s starting up here. So one, two, and the third one. And now carefully pull this down and you should be able to pop everything right out the front. And there we go. We're going to talk about a little bit about the differences in the updated version of the timing chain and the oil pump module versus the old version that came out of this uh, 2012 F30 uh, N20 engine right behind me. So the first thing you're going to notice is um, there's actually there's bulletins to replace all of these parts from BMW. BMW actually upped, like I said before, the warranty from a normal warranty to a seven years, 70,000 mile warranty. But obviously a lot of cars are still falling outside of that. One thing that needs to be replaced are both of the crankshaft sprockets. Um, so if you come over here, you look, you can see that this old one that came out of the car has a smooth mating surface on both the oil pump and the drive sprocket. Um, that smooth surface has been updated to a newer version which has a laser etching on it. So the way that this, this car holds time is everything is just pinched together and it's like a press fit. Um, what BMW found is some of the cars are actually slipping time. Um, so what they've done is they've updated both the oil pump drive sprocket and the cam drive sprocket to have this very special laser etching in the side. And that creates a little bit more friction on the uh, nose of the, the crankshaft and keeps it from rotating. Another thing that has been updated is this entire oil pump drive module. So um, there was a significant issue with um, the early cars stretching the chain out. 
and there was a lot of loud whirring noise coming from the lower portion of the engine. Um, that was found to be this oil pump drive module. Uh, basically what happens is the chain stretches out and then it runs against the, um, a little too hard against the guides and it creates a bunch of whirring noises. Um, so we have right here a brand new module. Um, so the module includes the tensioner, the guides, um, the oil pump drive, uh, sprocket as well as the crankshaft drive sprocket for the oil pump. So it's the entire unit, um, I can hold it up here, replaced all as one right there. Um, it's really, it's a pretty easy, easy to do job if you're doing the timing chain. So this is kind of one of the things, one of those things that if you're doing one, um, it absolutely makes sense to do the other. Um, but both jobs independently are a lot of work to get into the, into the engine and actually get to this, this stage of the job. Um, another thing we're gonna look at real quick, um, aside from the updated version, is also show how these uh, plastic guides have, have become brittle and started to fail over the years. Uh, so the car behind me has, is, uh, let's see, seven years old now? Um, and has about 135,000 miles on it. Um, and you can see there's little chunks um, actually broken off of the guides right here. Um, up at the top too, there's chunks broken off and there's some significant wear. Um, so these things become brittle. Um, basically oil soaks into the plastic, the plastic becomes more and more brittle um, between the heat cycles and all of those things. So looking at this, you can see I'm gonna stretch out the, you know, I put a Allen wrench through both the links so they're, they're being tensioned at the same spot. Um, pulling the old one and I'm gonna pull the new one and I'm gonna look at the length difference between the two. Um, and so pulling them tightly, it looks to me that the old chain has about, I would say one, maybe two to three millimeter of additional length on it. Looking at that, obviously we, you know, the chain is doubled up here, so we're gonna double that length. So we're looking at the chain is probably stretched anywhere from I'd say four to, to six millimeters overall um, during the 135,000 miles that this car has driven. One other thing you're gonna see is as the links wear out, the chain begins to be able to um, kind of wiggle a little more out of its normal uh, axis of, of movement. So if I pull this up, you can see that pulling it up the same where they both are laying flat, I can pull the used chain up much, much further than I can the new chain while keeping them both flat. So that's just showing how much, you know, how much wiggle this old chain has compared to how much wiggle this new chain has. So replacing these items is a very, very good idea and is going to breathe new life into this engine behind me. Um, that Honestly, there's nothing else wrong with it other than uh, the timing chain issues. Like I said, this is the Achilles heel of the BMW N20 N26 engines. And to be honest, we're actually starting to see a little bit into the six cylinder engines. Um, so the N55, which has the same uh, basic timing assembly, is starting to see similar issues. So I think this is going to be an issue that's gonna become more and more relevant um, as these cars age, and this is the way to fix them. So we just completed the disassembly of the car. It took a little longer than anticipated, so we decided to split the video into two parts. So part one is going to focus on the disassembly and all of the things we found wrong with the engine. And then part two is going to focus on the assembly and everything you need to know before you start up the engine. Uh, expect part two to be coming right down the pipeline after this video airs.